What's up, Blazies? It's Casey Ario, founder of Blaze Group and your host of Blaze Group Radio. I will be talking about the intersections of Black womanhood, entrepreneurship, news on the culture, and healing as we climb. I launched Blaze Group after spending a decade in corporate America structuring multi-billion dollar loans for large tech firms, but never once working on a deal team with another Black woman. I left to take world-class knowledge to the streets. Blaze means building leaders and accepting zero excuses, and we go beyond the bare minimum. More than solutions, we create lifelines that help Black women become as limitless as they feel. Snuggle up to this episode. May it feel as safe and nourishing as Big Mama's house did. What's up, Blazies? It is Thursday, September the 5th in the year 2024. And I'm so happy to be coming back to you on video. I will tell you the truth. Over the last month, (laughs) uh, as I've been very seriously uh, reprioritizing, uh, deciding what things I need to trim, deciding what things I need to lean into as I prioritize revenue, right? Cash flow, positive cash flow, solvency and everything, right? Uh, this podcast is one that I've been I've been thinking about heavily, and I and I've been um, thinking about the format and and the timing and the content and is it really something um, that I need to spend my time in? And uh, where I've landed at is it is so important to keep you updated on what's going on inside of Blaze Group. It's so important for me to continue to talk about these concepts, which are actually scarce out here, right? Um, again, that's revenue. That is cash flow positive positivity. Uh, it is really thinking about how to become disciplined, right, and keeping your company solvent. Where the rest of the world, honestly, a lot of time is talking about venture capital, giving up equity, how to take out debt, how to win grants, etc. Um, and what I've honestly noticed is that people are not great at generating revenue. Right. And I, I got to say the, the quiet part out loud. Right. Uh, we had a cash flow convos uh, event on August the 29th. Shout out to everybody that came through to that. That is exclusive to Blaze Pro members, uh, folks who are subscribed on the Blaze Group app. And the intention is truly to unpack revenue models. It is to quiz a, an intimate group of Black women on their understanding of revenue models and how to generate <laughs> sales and whether you really understand how to prioritize that. And truth be told, many of us don't. We don't have those reps. We don't have that discipline. We can't even articulate, right? We can articulate the stuff we want to make. We can articulate the things we wish our clients had and, and desired, but it is very, very hard it turns out, right, for folks to talk about how they're going to scale their revenue, right, how to do a really, really good job at creating stuff that people actually want to buy right now, right? And if you're not making sales, really unpacking how much of that is within your control and and, and due to your own decision making versus I didn't get the grant, I didn't get the loan, I did not get the raise from friends and family, I did not get the equity, right? Uh, because one thing that recessions do, one thing that economic downturns do, it really helps you understand whether you, whether you know how to generate revenue. When the wells dry up and people are not giving away money so freely and, and cash is not slushing around the market on luxury goods and nice to haves as often, it really tests whether you understand how to meet an actual need, a durable need, a lasting need that is not a fad for your target customer. And if you are meeting a need that somebody's willing to pay for, it is a lot easier for your business to stay afloat than it is if you just banking on the next grant, right? Or the next ca- the next cash injection. 
All right, and so um, as Blaze continues to unpack revenue models and, and, and cash flow stabilization, um, as we help you unlock banking products, that is the crux. I, I talked about that a lot on the last episode. This is the crux, and this is actually my zone of genius. This is actually how I want to hire inside of the company, how I want to make our products, how I want to do partnerships, and so much has happened, right? Big shout out to New Voices. Uh, during Black Business Month, we had a ton of programming centered on helping entrepreneurs stabilize their businesses. Uh, we did an IG Live that was phenomenal, where uh, we unpacked what the economic environment is uh, for entrepreneurs, especially for the Black dollar that's going to be circulating by 2030, right? Uh, 1.8 trillion is what's going to be circulating, which is almost double what it was just a few years back in 2019. Go watch that replay on the Blaze Group um, page on Instagram. That's at Blaze Group LLC. We did a learning lab live where I actually workshopped how uh, entrepreneurs can basically save their businesses, right, with tactical strategies that can be deployed right now, right? Like it's not about applying for grants and like you wishing and praying, et cetera. It's about understanding what banking products exist that can accelerate invoices that you have outstanding, right? And you can get it 180 days early, you're 90 days early, you're 30 days early, right? Um, how you can make decision making on which things to focus on first, which things are intermediate problems and which things are long term as it relates to cash, right? So that you allocate your time and your attention and your resources. Methodically, um, and some other things, right? So check that out. Um, if you have not already, uh, go to the New Voices page. You can go to our Facebook page. We put that whole replay up on our Facebook page as well. Um, and then I also did a guest blog post for them um, talking about the wealth gap and really unpacking the statistics around uh, that wealth gap and what we can do about it. But anyway, lots of stuff on that front. And then inside of Blaze, we did a cash flow combo. All right, and that was powerful. There's a difference between pain and tension, right? And this setting, which we're going to do every single month for members of the Blaze Pro subscription, we're going to truly workshop this thing called revenue, right? I'm going to ask some questions to really help you unpack what you, you are seeing in the world. Right. We talked about folk being stuck up in the moon, you know, in outer space. Right. Um, as the Boeing aircraft is not safe for two astronauts to come back. But unpacking the privatization that NASA did, where they have commercial entities creating these spacecrafts and sending it out and why they would do something like that. Right. Do you understand why somebody would privatize it instead of using their resources, their ingenuity? Right. Their know how. Right. Their resources. Like what does that do? What are our RFPs in actuality? Requests for proposals. Right. Um, and some other things. We took very real instances that are happening in the market. We talked about Apple and how it is um, now going from exclusively having a, a, a contactless pay where you can tap or double click. When you're in the store and the Apple wallet comes up to now opening it up to other providers, other payment providers where they can have apps, app wallets inside of the phone, right? And, and you double click or do something else and it's not exclusively Apple, it, it's opening up for other folks. Maybe it's going to be Venmo. Maybe it's going to be PayPal. What, what happens when uh, PayPal dominates not just online checking out, right? And that's faster than keying in your credit card. Right. But what happens when it's actually on your phone, Apple and Android? Right. And you can double like what happens to their revenue? What is their revenue model? Right. Does it help or hurt Apple? Does it help or hurt PayPal? Does it help or hurt Venmo? Right. Where folks are actually realizing they don't need a bank account. They don't need to wait for banks to show up in their hood and give them a free T-shirt and talk to them about maintenance fees. They can actually put money on a virtual wallet inside of Venmo and other other uh, fintech companies, right? And move money just as freely without the fees and the headache and the heartache and the heartbreak, right? We unpack these things because if you cannot look around you and understand the revenue models you're seeing, nine times out of 10, you probably have no idea what the optimal revenue model is for your own business, right? And you're not refining your strategy. You're not getting new ideas and applying it 
inside of your company. And so that is what that is for. There's a difference between pain and tension. And this is not harmful. It is not hurtful. It's not scary. It's actually beautiful, right? Beautiful time to get reps and build muscle, right? Around financial acumen because leaders must be cold in finance. I actually have on the shirt, y'all. Leaders must be cold in finance because when you run out of cash, you run out of time. And as founders, we have two jobs in our business. That's it. One is to make really good products that our customers want to buy. And two, it is to raise capital for your firm, period, right? And that's that's where we sit in there with it, okay? So I've talked a little bit about uh, the Blaze Pro membership for those who have not heard of it and want to know more about it. It's fire. When you download the Blaze Group app, which I recommend that you do on Apple or Android, just go to your app store and type in Blaze Group. Uh, you will see our app. You will see our logo. You will see our color, right? Our unique color. That is us. Download that app. Set up your profile, right? And there are tons of financial tools, templates, self-paced courses. There's an AI biz advisor named B, right? Engineered with Big Mama's Intelligence that can help you work through things at 3 a.m., right? Or when you're on the go, when you're taking your kid uh, to school and you waiting in the pick-me-up line, maybe, you know, in the afternoon, right? Don't do it while you're driving, right? But there are also, there's also exclusive access to some of these live events that I'm talking about, like cash flow combos that happens once per month, where we really get to unpack, right? Revenue models and our understanding of them and our understanding around what we're seeing and ask questions, right? Hot, hot seat advisory, ask questions of what you're seeing, right? Or what you're doing in your business, et cetera, right? There's so much. There's goal tracking in the app where you can measure the things that you say you care about and have a look back to see how far you've come, right? Because that's what you're going to write your books about. Right. That's what the blogs and the articles and the documentaries are going to be about. Those are the, the, that's what the TED Talks will be about one day. Right. The journey. Right. And remembering how far you've come. There's goal tracking in there. Um, community chats. Right. Where you can talk about random things or share your your milestones. You can share your goals. You can introduce yourself to a whole bunch of like minded peers around the world. Right. I invite you, I welcome you to the refuge called the Blaze Group app. And I mentioned this last time, instead of being generalists, right, and hiding in plain sight, because my my passion, y'all, is actually finance. We've done so much, worked on so many deals, have led companies uh, as a chief credit officer, right, led, led divisions, around credit, right? I've, I've structured deals. I've, I've taught people from all over the world about credit and, and, and finance and analysis, right? And it's, and it's a joy to muster the courage to sit unequivocally in that gift inside of Blaze for Black women entrepreneurs to ensure that more of us make it to the other side. And the other side that I'm focusing on first is the one that, that's, that, that is that five-year mark right? Today, only 3% of Black women-owned businesses survive beyond five years due to struggles with bootstrapping and achieving profitability. And again, recessionary times, like the one we're in, it really does come value whether you know how to make revenue or not. Because what do you do when the, when the crowdfunding ain't working because people don't have it to spare. What do you do when folks aren't giving out grants like they were in 2020, right? Because the funding has dried up due to DEI wars, right? It is a good time to understand how to sell products that your customers actually want to buy, not what you want them to have, what the things that they want to buy so that revenue that you don't owe back keeps your business afloat. Um, so definitely join that. I would love for you to join it. It is $9.99, $9.99 per month. It is a subscription. Um, no contract, right? No minimum time that you need to be on it. But but definitely uh, 
invest in yourself, right? Invest in yourself. Um, be part of that. You can DM me on that app. I respond to folk on the app all the time. Um, and it's good stuff, right? I'll, I'll talk to you about some some other experiences, some upgraded experiences um, more in the coming weeks, right? Uh, definitely we'll hit on next week even our, our Blaze Plus mentorship, right? Which is more intimate one-on-one support with me, right? Where I walk you through frameworks and we actually uh, customize some solutions and strategies for the your business, right? Over the course of a year. But start with the Blaze Pro membership, okay? Uh, two things, two things I actually want to uh, quickly touch on today. Um, some things that are happening in the world, right? Because that is very important for us to understand. Uh, I'm just curious. Let me see here what this sound is. Okay, cool. So number one, lifetime deals are a bust. That's, that's the best way I can put it. So during the boom of e-commerce and uh, folks building a lot of online things that there was a lot of demand for when the pandemic hit, lifetime deals were very, very common, okay? Uh, if you sign up today for life, you get X, Y, Z, right? And then there was this this online platform called AppSumo. Some of y'all are probably like, yeah, I know AppSumo, A-P-P-S-U-M-O, where AppSumo was a marketplace for people essentially offering lifetime deals, right? If you got in early on their product, you paid one time, and instead of paying the subscription price that most people would pay in the market, um, the standard rate, you had the lifetime deal in perpetuity. Allegedly, here we are in 2024, and lifetime deals have gone bust. So, uh, Airmeet. Airmeet is this beautifully designed, honestly, uh, event hosting infrastructure software, um, similar to, let's say, Zoom webinar, but on steroids, right? Similar to uh, Webinar Jam, but on steroids, where folks can um, host thousands of people in these dynamic um, exhibition halls, these dynamic stages, these um, dynamic lounges, right, for $18,000 per year. Okay. Uh, Blaze Group has actually hosted every single summit to date, the Blaze Virtual Summit, uh, which we've been honored by the Webby's for three times now. Uh, we've hosted that on the on Airmeet every single time. But Blaze Group did not pay and does not pay $18,000 per year, okay? <laughs> we actually got in on a lifetime deal, right? Through AppSumo, right? So AppSumo during the pandemic was selling the lifetime deal fully loaded, fully baked with all the bells and whistles for $499. Now, again, Again, had I bought the uh, market price, right, and taken a gamble on this this emerging technology, it would have been $18,000 per year. And so let's say today, that would have been four years of that, right? Um, so a little bit shy of $80,000, right? About $74,000 invested to date, to be exact, right? But instead, it was like 500 bucks one time. And I had all the bells and whistles. Right. Well, lifetime deals have gone bust. Uh, Airmeet sent out an email to folk like me <laughs> uh, detailing that essentially they're realizing that revenue has to keep the business afloat. Right. They might they, they got these injections in the beginning. Right. These investors, people who believed in it and all of these things. And they got a little bit of money from folks who are willing to do these lifetime deal injections. Right. But the cost to actually maintain the platform, to hire staff, to um, implement the code changes and all of this stuff, like all the things they're promising with the bells and whistles, the vendors that they have to pay, it far, it far strips, outstrips, right, the revenue they're bringing in because it is so important to understand how to generate revenue. 
right? I know. And I'm like, I, listen, I was a banker and loved it. I still sit on boards of banks and funds. But understanding how to generate revenue is what separates those who will last and those who won't, right? And so they detail for their lifetime deal folk that uh, there's no way that they can sustain the business providing all of this stuff <laughs> basically for money that they received years ago, and but everybody is using it, right? Um, and that the real cost is $18,000 and the $18,000 per year actually would cover all of their operational expense, but they're not getting that, right? And so they're discontinuing that and forcing these lifetime folk um, into either losing it all, right? Or paying, right? Paying, uh, not the 18,000, but something south of that, right? So that is definitely indicative of um, that type of model, right? And what is happening with that model as that bubble bursts, right? Because when you had a whole lot of money slushing around, I think I don't think it's any secret that in 2020, there's a lot of extra dollars for a lot of things, actually, right? It wasn't just um, tech farms being invested in. You had people making commitments to BIPOC communities, people... Uh, allocating dollars to uh, reparative justice and funds, all of these things, right? And a lot of that is dried up. And so um, if your business model was only based on rate, and I'm not talking about nonprofits, right? I'm talking about people who are for-profit companies. If your business model has only been based on people blessing you with a donation or an equity injection, you're going to struggle, right? So we got we to gotta get cold in finance. We got to get cold in finance. Uh, second thing, second and last uh, story I want to talk about today is about Elon Musk, Twitter, and revenue, of course. No surprise there. So uh, a few years ago, right? I mean, I don't even want to. It, it's not even been that long ago. Honestly, I feel like it was like <laughs> last year that we were all up in arms about this. But Elon Musk uh bought twitter okay it was about 41 billion dollars or something like that right <laughs> and he took out some debt to do it right and this is relevant to us right because if you are a founder right you need to understand banking products right and how these things work right so he took out about 13 billion dollars to acquire uh twitter right? And loans that are taken out are supposed to be paid back. There is no exception to that rule, right? If it is a loan, right? And, and there's a payback on it, you're supposed to pay it back, right? Um, and in and, and the, the loans that I structured, which were cash flow deals, right? We wanted you to pay it back with cash flow, Right, like we, your money from operating your business, so we expected you to be able to pay it back there. If that didn't work, we always thought through it. If that didn't work, we wanted to be very sure that you had liquidity to pay for it. So we looking at the cash balance, and banks are looking at you the same way. So I'm, I'm walking through this on purpose, right? And if you didn't have a cash balance, not on day one, because we we actually want to see the cash on day one. But if if in the future over the X number of years that you're supposed to pay back, if you don't have a cash balance, right, we expect that at least you can sell some, right? Maybe we got some liens on some of these assets, right? You can liquidate and then we get some. But the point is, loans are made to be paid back. Well, in this case, right, Twitter is not making the revenue that Mr. Musk had hoped it would, right? And I want you to ask yourself, what is the revenue model of Twitter? I, I, like literally, I can't hear you right now, so I can't do a, a buzzer if you get it wrong, but what is the revenue model of, of Twitter, right? If, if Musk were to pay back this $13 billion based on cash flow from operations, where would they have come from? And I want you to say it out loud, right? Like I really want, uh, members of this community to be called at like really breaking apart revenue models and understanding how people make money because if it is just about raising capital from VC and investors, listen, listen, that is not sustainable, right? 
Okay, so ad revenue, right? Ad revenue is what is supposed to be uh, the, the meat, right? Uh, the crux of how Twitter stays alive, right? And how it gets its money. But when Musk took this hunt, a lot of the companies balanced. They were, they were marketing on Twitter. They balanced because he was alienating a lot of the user base. And if there's less eyes on their ads, then it's a waste of money to spend it on a place that people ain't looking at, all of this stuff. Right? And so that means that cash flow dwindled as folks who bought ads and used to run ads left. And now we're in a situation where these banks that gave an aggregate of $13 billion, they don't think he's going to be able to pay it back. Right? And this could be any one of us. Right? I'm using this example. <laughs> but I want us to look at Twitter not just as a the town square, a digital town square, but as a business right? with a revenue model and, and, and identifying when it's working and when it's not working. Right. So banks, you might not know this. Um, some of you might actually, because during the 08 crisis, uh, a lot of folks learned that the banks that gave them the mortgage had already sold it off to somebody else. And it's like, can you prove I own the mortgage? Because if you can't, maybe I don't pay back. Right. It is true that uh, banks are typically in the moving business, not the storage business. They don't necessarily hold on to your loan for the whole life of it. They actually try to sell it for more. Right. Uh, then you got it for, or then, then they actually put out to make up to flip a profit that way, right? So, uh, instead of waiting, instead of waiting for all of the interest to come in from you, they go ahead and make their money on the front end by selling it off at a, at a little premium, right? From the from the money they, they lent out, and at least they make something, but it's somebody else's uh problem to worry about over the next five years or 10 years, whatever it is. Right? So, the banks thought that even though Elon was a little bit controversial, if you will, even though he was a bit alienating, even though this deal was rushed in a matter of days, not weeks, not months, but days, and they really didn't assess all of the stuff, like how sticky the revenue base was, how loyal the advertising customers would be, they thought they could sell it. But things went so bad so quickly, nobody wanted to buy it, so they can't sell it. And now they're actually writing off millions of dollars in losses and saying like, yeah, we don't think this is going to come to fruition, right? Now, I shared that only to draw the point back to you, right? If a very rich man, if, if, if a very rich man, of a very, in, in the CEO, the founder, or not the founder, he's not the founder, he's the founder of some things, but not this, right? The CEO, the owner, right? Because he even gave it the CEO title too, right? Of a very prominent company, has not been able to figure out a stable revenue play, right? Then of course this is hard, right? For us as small businesses, right? To turn on a dime and to really think about durability and stability, et cetera. But it is something that we should work at over and over and over and over again so that we do get very strong at it, right? Because times will come where people aren't throwing money around. Times will come where your friends and family don't have the actual liquidity to invest in you. Times will come where you don't hear anything about a grant that fits your industry or your situation for a very long time. And revenue is the place where we want to be able to live in day in and day out and really understand the needs and desires and the gunshot wounds of our customers so that we solve real problems and make money that we don't have to pay back. Right. I hope that was helpful. Um, I love y'all and I mean it. Again, I'm, I'm doing this because I really do want folks to understand how Blaze is solving problems, where you can come if you want to work with us, right? And the, the Blaze Group app, that Blaze Pro membership is something that I really, really do urge you all to subscribe to. It's $9.99 per month. Um, as you work through that material and you get comfortable, if you want to, excuse me, upgrade to the Blaze Plus mentorship and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you absolutely can. That is also available in the app, right? Um, but we're here and, and the goal is to help you stabilize your cash flow and help you unlock banking products, right? And, and be very comfortable, right? And your ability to use these things and use these tools and these strategies uh, to sustain yourself in business. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for rocking with Blaze. We love you deep. And that's it.
Thank you so much for tuning in to Blaze Group Radio. Remember, you have not yet met all of the people in your life who are going to love you. So keep going. Download the Blaze Group app for day-to-day support on your entrepreneurial journey. Until next time.